Hey guys, Ben here from blogwithben.com and I wanted to create a quick video that addresses an issue that I get contacted about almost daily. This issue has to do with the child theme configurator and the PHP debug output. It's an easy fix and this video will walk you through the process of fixing it. In addition, I'm gonna walk you through the entire process of creating a child theme. So by the end of this video, you'll not only fix the PHP debug issue, but you'll also have a fully functional child theme as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind about this tutorial is that I'm using the WordPress theme Radiate with Bluehost web hosting. If you're using a different theme, then the steps will be the exact same. But if you're using a different web hosting service, then the steps may be a little different. But ultimately, this video will still be able to help you fix the issue. All right, so to get started from your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over Tools and then click on Child Themes. And this will bring you to the settings page. Now, one thing I love about this plugin is that they recently made an update that streamlines the process and makes it super easy to go through and understand. And I'll show you what I mean. So the plugin does a really good job of visually walking you through the process. As you can see, they've numbered circles outlining each step. So step number one, select an action. We're going to create a new child theme. And since this is our first child theme, just make sure that that's selected. Next, step number two, you'll want to select the parent theme that you're going to be using to create the child theme. So whichever theme you're using, make sure that that theme is listed in the drop-down menu. Next, step number three, click the Analyze button to start the child theme process. And then, whoa, what is this? This does not look good. No worries, I'm actually super glad this happened. I have received literally hundreds, if not thousands of emails asking about this PHP debug output in this plugin. Sometimes this happens with the plugin and the WordPress install. Luckily, it's not a huge issue and it can be easily fixed. But I will say that these next steps are extremely important because you'll be editing your WP config PHP file. Now, if you don't follow these steps precisely, you can potentially crash your site. Now, I always recommend making a backup of your site before messing with your code, and Bluehost offers a convenient way to constantly back up your site on a daily basis. And let me show you what I mean. If you go back to your Bluehost user panel, you can access the backup services. So to get back to the Bluehost user panel, hover your mouse over Bluehost in the upper left-hand side of the screen, and click on Back to Bluehost. And then once you're back at the Bluehost user panel, click on My Sites on the left-hand side of the screen. And this will bring you to your site management portal. And without getting into the weeds, we'll just focus on the backup options. So click on the Manage Site button. And then in that upper, uh, in that upper nav menu, click on the Backups menu item. And if you're serious about your blog and you want to protect it from potential data loss, I highly recommend that you invest in CodeGuard. It's only $2.99 per month. Uh, you can cover five websites, one gigabyte of storage, daily backup and monitoring, and three restores per month. Um, and again, you can rest assured that your content will be backed up on a daily basis. This means that if you make a change to your blog and you end up crashing the site, CodeGuard will let you revert back to an older version of your blog and save your content. pretty handy and again it's it's a highly recommended investment if you're serious about your blog all right so if you want to invest in code guard go ahead and pause the video and put that in place but if you follow my steps exactly you're gonna be just fine so let's get started so on the left hand side of the screen you're gonna to want to click advanced and this will bring you to the advanced section of the back end now don't worry all we're gonna focus on is one single file so to do what we need to do click on file manager and this will bring us to the actual files associated with our blog think of this as like the skeleton of the blog alright next click on where it says public underscore HTML and be sure to click on the actual word public underscore HTML and not that plus icon and this will open up the file that we need and there it is, WP 
config.php. So go ahead and click on that so that it's highlighted and turned blue. Then at the top of the screen, click the edit link so that we can edit this file. And you should see another pop-up recommending that you make a backup of the file. Again, if you have CodeGuard in place, you'll be fine, but you'll also be fine if you follow my steps. So go ahead and click the edit button. And here we are, the wp-config file. Now, if you're brand new to code, this probably looks like Japanese to you. But like I said, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do, and it's surprisingly super easy. So the change we need to make is in the code at the very bottom of the file. So scroll down to the very bottom of this code, where it says define and then wp cron lock timeout. That's where we're gonna make our first adjustment. What you'll wanna do is comment out this section. And all this is gonna do is it's hiding this snippet of code from your blog. So it's there, but it isn't, kind of like a ninja. So to comment this code out, put your cursor right before the word define and type forward slash asterisk asterisk. And then once you do that, you'll notice that all of the code turned from blue to green. Then the final step is to close it out. So at the very end of the code, after the semicolon, type in a space, so hit the space bar, and then another asterisk followed by forward slash. And again, all the code should be green, and everything looks good, perfect. So then the final step, after you commented that snippet out, is to click the Save Changes button at the top of the screen. And then you'll see a success notification letting you know that you're good to go. Awesome, nice work. Next, we'll go back to your blog and then back to the child theme. So click on Home on the upper left-hand side of the screen. And then click the Log into WordPress button. Then back of the dashboard, hover your mouse over Tools and click on Child Theme. And then we're going to follow the same steps as before. So make sure Radiate is selected as the parent theme and click the Analyze button. And voila, our changes to the WP config file worked. As you can see, once the plugin is done analyzing your theme, you should get a notification and a green check mark letting you know that the child theme is ready to be created. Next, you'll see the bunch of other steps have opened up. You can go ahead and leave the default settings alone for four, five, six, and seven. But if you scroll down to step number eight, You'll want to check this box if you want the menu from the parent theme to be copied and used for the child theme. And since this is our first time configuring the child theme, just go ahead and check this box. Finally, we'll want to create the theme, so go ahead and click the Create New Child Theme button. And boom, we now have a child theme. You should see a splash notification letting you know that all is well. And then before we activate the child theme, we'll want to preview it just to make sure everything looks normal. So at the top of the screen, click on the preview your child theme link. And then you'll be able to view the new theme in action. And again, you'll just want to make sure everything looks good in terms of structure and, and functionality. And again, we haven't done anything to the theme. We just want to make sure that the parent theme is transferred over correctly and everything looks great so far. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and activate our child theme. So click the Activate and Publish button in the upper left-hand side of the screen. And then once it's published, let's close this out and confirm that our child theme is running. So go ahead and X out of this. That'll take us back to the dashboard. 
So let's confirm that everything looks good. So let's hover our mouse over appearance and then click on themes just to double check and there it is our child theme is active and we now have a theme that mirrors the parent theme so that's going to do it for this video if you found it helpful I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like share and subscribe to the blog with Ben YouTube channel as always your support means a great deal to me and my family and for that I thank you so with that being said, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.